live from Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Cube covering Ansible Fest 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Cube's live coverage for two days here in Atlanta, Georgia, for Ansible Fest. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Stu Miniman, Andreas Benokratis, who's here, and senior principal product manager at Ansible. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you. 2017, you were last on Red Hat Summit. So, uh, it was a uh was basically the introduction to Ansible Network, basically, so. So much has gone on. One of the things I'm really impressed by this event and why we're here is um, configuration management and super important part of the plumbing. We all know DevOps is infrastructure as code, but as the evolution of cloud and software has changed in the game, you start to see visibility into where automation's coming in. This is the whole focus of the event. Automation for all, that's the theme. We're, and this is about the core infrastructure, so it's not like it's just a random thing. Sixth most popular GitHub project out of millions. This is real. It's real, it's quite real. And especially on the network side, this is something that came out organically. The, the, the birth of the Ansible network was because it was agentless, honestly. You know, simple, powerful, agentless. The agentless piece was the piece that really made it really fly. For Ansible, for and networks. configuration management, by the way, on ne networking side, when we talked about this before, is the most important because that's where it's the most static, has been the most, where it's been most static. I mean, we all know networking, right? But as networking becomes policy-based and moves up the stack, we've seen some companies like Cisco trying to figure out their DevNet. It's like, you're starting to see the networking mindset moving up the stack. This is super huge change. It's a huge change, but the nice thing is that it's easy to get into. So all the network operators, the network engineers, they're still used to using command and config modules with their iOS devices, their EOS devices, Juniper, all those things, right? They don't have to throw away everything they've learned for the past 10, 15 years in order to get with Ansible. And then when they go beyond that, then they can start seeing the real power of the Ansible platform, which we announced today. So going from command line to programmability, is kind of what's happening. Yes, absolutely. And what's the big, what are the big uh, key factors right now that are driving this? So a lot of key factors are, I mean you saw the keynote this morning with, with Microsoft, That's our, that was a, a huge, I mean they've been doing this for about two years. So they started from, from nothing, they chose Ansible, and they quickly saw that it, the, the power of automation for the networks, but they had to grow it at scale. So that was the big problem was, how do we do this at scale while still using all the knowledge that we've learned? So, Day zero, day one is extremely important, and obviously we know that, but as we were going down the journey with them from an engineering standpoint, day two became extremely important, and that's what we're, we're focused on now. Yeah, uh, it was really interesting. Microsoft really talked about that cultural shift. Uh, you know, we've heard in the networking space, seen forever, it was like, you're all going to need to become coders, you're going to need to be able to do this. To tell us how Ansible it is really impacting some of those cultural shifts and uh, you know, how has that discussion changed today versus what it might have been a few years That's ago? That's truly half the battle is the culture. I like to call it as everyone's talking about digital transformation. In the network world, this is an analog transformation in all honesty. <laughs> this isn't anything about the bits and bytes. You can automate anything today. There are lots of point tools to automate networks today, but how are you going to actually move that into a world where culturally you can have people buy in from the bottom up organically as well as from the top down from the IT managers. It's extremely important. So on the platform announcement, the key announcement was the Ansible automation platform. Where, can you just help us understand the relationship between network automation and the automation platform? Because obviously you need to move things around the network, but there's a lot of other things being configured as well and automated. What's the relationship between the two? So, so before we had the platform, actually Ansible network was an actual product. It was a separate SKU, it was a separate offering and we treated it as such as a platform. We were like the first guinea pigs I like to think of. We were the ones that said, let's treat Ansible as a platform and let's move it that way. So we actually went out and built roles, we built modules, uh, we built a network engine, which is a, a parser, right, similar to like TextFSM, uh, you know, those kind of things. We put those in Galaxy, 22,000 downloads later, we proved it. We know that everything that we're doing in, in Galaxy today for Ansible Network proves the fact that people are using it as a platform and we were successful in doing that. And it's how many years is that, just track record wise? What was it, how many years? Oh, that was a year. So 2.7 was when we released Network Engine for parsing, parsing CLI commands. You know, and that moves into the next generation of what we call the day two operations for networking is typically we see network configuration has been a one-way street. So you would pull configuration data from a device, you would have to parse it, you put it in an SCM, it's in an SCM, and now you actually have to put it into a template and then you push it. Right? This has been a one-way street typically. 
And it's an Ansible has been, it's very good at one-way streets, but now we're moving towards an Ansible 2.9 coming soon is making that a two-way street. So integrating the fact collection from modules. So when you pull facts from iOS, EOS, NXOS, et cetera, treating that data consistently across the board and, and using that forward. Yeah, networking is one of the tracks here at the show. What are, what are some of the more popular things? What, 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 where's the focus? The focus is, well, it's, it's across the board. Again, you have people that are IT managers that have been doing Ansible for years and now they're saying, hey look, they're seeing network automation is, is pr extremely pervasive. How can we get that into our pipeline? We have ticketing systems. Um, how can we integrate Ansible network with our larger business processes? Uh, and then top, t like top five use cases, the typical backing up systems uh, uh, from uh, you know, backup restore, uh, and then doing a lot of source of truth things there too. So making sure that you have all of your, your network c configuration data off the box. Right? A lot of people are fetching configurations from thousands and thousands of devices. That's pretty hard to do, so let's make that easier for them. What's been the customer interest in the growth path for network automation? Because obviously that makes sense, I see the different product, but now that the automation picture is getting wider and bigger, what's the interest from customers? What's the, the key focus area now on that? Well, we've typically focused on, to date, and, and from the marketing slides, is the number of platforms we've supported. We, we, you can always see up to the right, right? We support 10 platforms, 20, 30, we're up to 65 platforms supported. I think we've pretty much proven the fact that I think we can pretty much work on anything. So it's going beyond that and making lives easier for the network operators and engineers holistically. And this event here, what's going on here for you guys here? What specific tracks you're doing? Right, so what we're actually- conversations you're having? Yeah, we're talking more about the actual resource modules that are coming in 2.9 I was talking about, which is bringing fact collection and the modules together as a two-way street. So as people start moving at this, these day two operations, um, we have a lot of experts here and they're hitting stumbling blocks around. They're managing Jinja template, like 500 line Jinja templates, like on a daily basis. Nobody wants to do that. So we're getting to a place where the people that are really relying on Ansible uh, in, in, the, in, in the expert field, making it much, much easier for them to go forward. We had Greg on earlier and um, Rob, and they talk about the glue layer that Ansible provides. For the folks that are not using Ansible, what's the big message that you'd like to send them? What's the, what's the real uh, attraction from the customers? And why should people be using Ansible? Well, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's for everything. I mean, you don't have to, you really don't. I mean, it, it speaks for itself, but it breaks down the, the barriers. If you're a server person or a storage person or a cloud person or a Windows person or a network person, you all have the same language based on Ansible. And you can get things done more quickly and more efficiently with that way, so. One of the other things we were talking to the community about is the, the feedback loops that you have with the community. T tell us a little bit about what y you know, your team's hoping to get from the users attending and participating oh, here. Absolutely, on the Ansible network side, everything is done transparently in the community. We have weekly, we have a community meetup. We've had this for a long time. Everything's out in the open, everything's in GitHub. Everything that we've done, we've had a contributor day, I don't know if you were here on Monday, it was focused on network. Uh, we're pitching this idea around resource modules and, and the forward strategy. Of, of the platform as it relates to network. Everyone, including the contributors, developers, the partners, all of the people, like you could see that half the, off the, half the vendors here on the floor are, are network partners, so they're invested as well. They want this to succeed. Um, so we're extremely proud and happy that we're, they're along for the ride as well. All right, maybe explain to our audience what an angry potato is. <laughs> Uh, it's a, was it a tater? It's an angry tater. Uh, yeah, it's a, the mascot for AWX, I believe. And um, yeah, they're fun. The stickers and the little plushies. So we're <laughs> we going back our to our plushies. Help, our, help oh. yourself with cube stickers. I appreciate it. <laughs> What's the coolest thing that you're, you've seen this year that you think uh, people should know about? Oh, wow. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of focus around testing and development. So a lot of developers are, you know, writing code, they're reinventing the wheel themselves. So developers are, are writing the same stuff over and over and over again. So how can we scale that to say, hey, why don't we all get together and write the same code? And then about testing. So once you actually have the code, you have a lot of vendors here on CI, CD, testing quality. So we at its Ansible, um, we can talk, and this was Greg, I don't know if you mentioned it earlier, but Greg DeGonisberg said, you know, we're really good at making sure um, playbooks and roles and modules are correct. But we, we want to make sure that the vendors and the developers like focus on the functionality. We can give them guidance around um, syntax and cor uh, correctness, but we want to make sure that the innovation really comes from them. Andreas, talk about this Ansible Fest this year, 2019. As you, we were on into 2020, coming up towards the end of the year, fall here. 
why is this year different? What's important about this year? Um, this seems to be, this almost seems to be an inflection point this year. Why, why is it so important this year? What's, what's going on right now that makes this event so popular? You're seeing convergence in a lot of different activities. The, the silos around, you typically say, I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm, I do Kubernetes, or I do network, or I do cloud. You're starting to see a lot of these people like, okay, well, I have to do a cloud, I have to do a cloud VPN connection using containers and automate the network. So you're starting to see a lot of these different traditional people having to think outside of their traditional areas and have to start thinking about other areas to, like their, whatever, the, whatever their technology silo is in their head, they have to start learning, or they're being forced to learn around a lot of different things. It's a systems architecture. Absolutely. Systems have consequences. You can't yeah. just think in a silo. That's the issue. Absolutely. That seems to be the core issue. And also culturally, it's collaborative. I mean, who would have thought configuration management would be the next social network for enterprises? Absolutely. Turning it out to be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not social network literally like <laughs> Facebook, but you know. Agreed. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thank Appreciate you so much for having insight. me. We're breaking all the action down here at Ansible Fest where DevOps is being operationalized, cultural change within organizations, but capabilities, much more of a systems view. And obviously the networking is a key part of it. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, back after this short break. <laughs>